because they're big Ooh. offlaners, they're all still out there. So uh, the Beastmaster, the Ohio Special, Reserve has time. been the Batrider over the past couple months. Less so the past two or three weeks, but uh, probably his most stable offlaner if they want to get someone who can be the key initiator for the team. You do have to worry about the defensive relocate, though, and uh, that makes things a little tricky here for them. Hmm. Yeah, that's where you'd ideally want someone who can maybe look to cancel the defensive relocate. Someone like an Earthshaker is always really nice at protecting Shadowfiend and doing that. Centaur's pretty good at countering Earth offensive shaker. relocates. So uh, they will go for the Shaker that you mentioned. Oh, yeah. Just solid all around pick. You can even run him as an offlane. I've seen a higher play an offlane Earthshaker from time to time, although typically it is a support, but. Good at counseling the relocate is a big reason this pick's here is picked in. I, I think after the last game, the big offlaner that both teams will probably be eyeing is the Axe, though. That, that guy did a lot of work early. Yeah, as much as he kind of was a letdown in the, the mid to late game, he crushed the laning stage. He got so much out of that lane, pushed a T1 tower in his zone and got a very good timing on his Blink Dagger. As we'll now go into the Malaysian next we'll pick Magnus Band out. Hero S4 is kind of very well known for it. It's the kind of Game tempo control of mid, which seems menu. like a lot stronger in the new patch. Where it's kind of like DK, Pandit, Brewmaster Five type heroes I mentioned. Magnus menu. feels a similar alliance where he's not going to need a whole lot of farm. He's not really a carry mid, but he can do a lot with this new patch. It'll be Secret who removed the bristle back. Not an easy hero to burst in general, and uh, could be a, a little bit stronger this game, it feels. The gyro is pretty good at zoning him, though, with the rocket barrage. So if they want to throw the gyro on the safe lane, not the, the worst hero to deal with him. Beastmaster now the band from Malaysia. Uh, I guess with the West pick, we're unlikely to see the, the Kuroki Visage at this point. So the big questions for Secret are probably going to be, what does S4 look to play here? And mm. what is Puppy going to be handling? Yeah, and both those bands were on the S4 here. It's say, okay, we banned enough of Puppies at the Chen Enchantress. You can get the Enigma if you want, but that's like too greedy, it feels like. With Wisp, who wants to stack, you, you want the jungle mostly for your mid and your maybe your carry gyrocopter. So... Doesn't feel like Enigma's going to be the pick, and they say, okay, well, now we target S4. So take out Beastmaster and Magnus. S4 used to play a lot of Beastmaster. If you go way back to like his alliance days, he played it from time to time. So is a hero he can run. Hmm. How about that Zai Techies? Techies got some <laughs> nice buffs in the most recent patch. Yeah. He's yeah, been let's... trying to make Techies a thing in 6.83. Now he's got a little extra ammunition. Okay. I, I, do, 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 I do you see it. a chance of that? <laughs> very very no. small chats. <laughs> yeah, you know, this this is anything can work as uh, a our great good, our good buddy Johan. Great, buddy once one, said. Yeah. <laughs> great guy once said, anything can work in Dota 2. Well, secret gonna ban out the line here. Maybe have their eyes uh. on something like a, a storm, a queen of pain, who's particularly vulnerable to the hex. Yeah. It's I feel like a... the gyrocopter's not scared of the hex. He's got the wisp behind him. Not like a super scary ganking support either. A bit curious to see it. Maybe they're going for an illusion based. No, I mean, what, you've got your carry. So I mean, the, the big one is PL, and honestly, PL's pretty good against even Lion, I would say, because you just always have a new army of illusions. It's more, yeah, I guess with the... The okay. instant disable is good, though. Mm. So Clockwork gets picked up. Great against our Shaker. Also great against Shadow Fiend before he gets BKB, and even after he does, you can still just kind of soak up the BKB charge and prevent a good Requiem, so... Yeah, you can cancel the first attempted cast of it. So Queen of Pain, third pick, and I think this is probably a safe lane here for KYXY. Yeah, I don't really see this in the off lane for Ohio. He's much more on the, like, the, the Bat Rider, Centaur, Clockwork type heroes. The really nice thing about this hero is that you can you probably start with the support, zoning out the Clockwork, giving Queen of Pain free farm, but once you hit three or four minutes in, that support can then go roaming and ganking because Queen of Pain can dominate the Clockwork one-on-one on one with the early help and support. So we'll see probably some early zoning and then Queen of Pain left alone in there. Whatever the five position support, or maybe four position support, whatever goes with the Earthshaker, it's going to be able to help contest runes, help the Shadow Fiend out, maybe even look for kills on the secret mid laner. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how Secret chooses to use their Gyrocopter. We normally see him in the safe lane, I would say. Even with a Wisp, he isn't the best hero killer just because he has to get right next to you in mid lane. There's not much room to chase. But uh, if you want to run a dual lane, then potentially could just have the Wisp mostly off stacking and just keep on spamming that homie miss on the Queen of Pain. I guess there's always the very slight option of a support gyro, though. It does feel pretty unlikely with a Wisp already. Both heroes more on the, the greedy end, and then you wouldn't yeah. really have a proper Witch stone. Doctor. Yeah, there we go. There's your, your other support to go with this. Witch Doctor, some good team fight, which the Wisp maybe doesn't provide as much as far as team fight control and damage output. So Witch Doctor kind of make up for some of the Wisp's weaknesses as a support. Hmm. 
They have pretty good setup for the death ward. The, the hook shot, the call down for its zoning potential. Malaysia's draft looking very much like what Secret would have picked in the previous patch when they were having their success. They have the Queen of Pain Shadow Fiend duo looking for a second yeah. strong support. Even the way they're going to lane it, it's going to be like the Shadow Fiend mid, the Queen of Pain safe lane. That's something Secret's done quite a bit of. So, yeah, the, the big question mark is what is Ohio going to play this game? And it feels like probably time to ban the Bat Rider with this ancient hmm. apparition being picked yeah. up. I think. Uh, Hmm. Do they want? I mean, Batrider may be not the tankiest of heroes, and there is the Wisp with the relocate save, but that's still not something you can fully rely on against No Shaker. Yeah, it's. I feel like the main reason is just because they they get the AA, and and Bat seems to be the hero to yes. initiate for AA. You want someone who can. I mean, you get the highest hero. Them into the ice the highest hero is always is pretty much the initiator, be it the axe, the blink, the blink axe centaur, or a hero like a yeah Batrider. I mean, something I which is going to go I, king, king. I would love to see him do something different. I'd love to see that Ohio Nature's Prophet. Uh, you know, we've, now we've got the new Aghanims upgrade, which is, I don't know how effective it is. It's kind of cool sounding, but <laughs> <laughs> they definitely need someone to initiate this game. So probably exactly, not yeah. the game to, to go. If you had a mid-hero that was like the Beastmaster. Or like or, a Dragon Knight. Yeah, maybe. if you had a mid-hero who could fill in that role and start fights off, great. You can pick up a Nature's Prophet. But this game to me just feels like it doesn't work. But Secret maybe think it does. They bound it out. There is a lot of global potential with AA profit but i mean if they really want that i guess they're still the offlane zeus but he may he may struggle a lot against yeah. a potential gyro wisp lane ohio also one of the best profit players out there i mean going back to like the ti3 it was him and bulldog who were like the two scariest nature's profit players out there they played very different styles but he's very well known for his nature's profit all right well team secret time to lay all their cards on the table here it seems most likely it's an s4 hero at this point what are yep. your what's your what's your favorite S4 hero Game left in the pool? Um, ooh, what's gonna be you? Going against a Shadow Fiend mid, you haven't got Five much gank seconds. potential with Witch Remaining. Doctor Wisp as your two supports, so I mean, he's not really known for his storm play, but is a potential Five hero you can seconds. have and it can Invoker. benefit a lot from the Wisp. Invokers out there. Oh, the there's, you there's your S4 hero up there. All right, well Team Malaysia working on their final pick of the draft, guys. And while we wait to see what this pick is going to be, there's a live poll now at redbullbattlegrounds.com. Get in, get involved and let us know who you think they should have reflected to. Uh, was it the correct move to reflect onto Malaysia or was this a, a mistake in the end by Summer's Rift? Let us know. Very curious to hear what you all have to say. All right, so Team Malaysia, they've Thanks saved all their reserve time. They are so cruisy with this draft. They've just got... All the time in the world to think about what they want to go for. <laughs> it's like two minutes for the last pick. Yeah, two minutes. So do we want the axe? Do we want the bat rider? Mm. Do we want the centaur with his new axe upgrade? It it just could be one of those games where you pick bat and like every single lasso gets relocate save. You got gyro to get a quick level yeah. six for the wisp. Shadow fiend maybe the hero that goes mid very killable if Earthshaker's shaker's not there for that duo potentially. So and clockwork decent against bat as well because you can you get that hook shot off on him quickly. You can stop him pulling away the target and kind of lock the bat in place so curious to see what secret do with this draft it is a it doesn't feel like the most well-rounded draft to me they haven't got the best burst damage coming in it really feels like this is a draft not that can't really push towers that doesn't really gank amazingly well outside of the clockwork hook or until the brute it's a blink, so it feels like they almost have to play for the late game. And they team fight really well, though. Once yeah. they get their items up, if you get the you get the hook shot, you have the brute blink, you have witch doctor getting a good ult off with the call down. But there's not super reliable setup. I guess that's the the main concern that you're highlighting yeah. here. I am liking the Malaysia drop better at this point. They still got a pick to go. The other thing Malaysia can do is run the Earth Shaker as an offliner, but no, nope, they're going to pick. Up. I, I was actually just void, but. Uh, this kind of fills a similar role here with the Ravage. Yeah. Good setup know. for the AI Splash, the Requiem, the Quap ulti. Uh, we have seen Tide struggle a little bit more in the offlane today, though. The stacks don't come quite so fast and furious. You don't get as much gold out of them. And if it is the Gyro safe lane, he is going to get zoned out pretty damn hard. Kraken Shell will not help you too much against the Rocket Barrage. Okay. Well, we'll see how things unravel here. Yeah, I think that's one. And then Secret have an amazing team fight. Malaysia's like, well, let's just throw in some more team fight ourselves. Maybe not as good. He is an initiator, but not in the sense where he always wants to start a fight. You can't rely on Blink Ravage to hit five heroes if there's just one here in the front lines. Whereas if it's a lasso or an axe call, you're happy to use that on one hero because it's got that shorter cooldown or lasso is meant to be used on one hero. But you have to be a bit more patient with the type, which is where it's fine, clean initiations. 
All right, with that out of the way, we get into our fourth game of the day. Team Malaysia down to two lives, Secret and IG, the two teams that remain with three lives. Potential for Malaysia to either be the first team down to one life or to drag Secret down to their level. And uh, leave IG as the undisputed king so far in, in day one. And with that, we're going to go ahead and introduce our teams here. We've got Team Secret on the Radiant side, Malaysia on the Dire. We'll start with Secret. It'll be S4 playing the Brewmaster heading towards bottom. Going mid, at least for now, will be Arteezy on the Gyrocopter. His partner in crime will be Kuroki on the Wisp, looking to get that bounty rune, rush the bottle. Following up will be Puppy playing the Witch Doctor, and that does leave Zai as the offlink clock. On the Dire side, we've got Team Malaysia. KYXY playing safe lane is on Queen of Pain. We're going to see Ancient Apparition in the hands of Johnny on the support role. We've got Kachik Imba going to be going mid on Shadowfiend. Earthshaker going to be in the hands of Mushi. And finally, that leaves in the offlane, Ahayo playing Tidehunter. Yeah, well, you might see a little invade here early on by Secret as they move towards the ramp yeah. into the dire jungle. Not actually yeah. going to happen. And do you want to point really out? want that bounty, that level one bounty rune on Wisp. That would be sweet, and it looks like they should get it, judging by the, the position of these heroes. Malaysia's like, we ain't getting this. Let's go bottom lane. Let's try and take the fight to S4. But S4 holding his ground for now. There is a Fissure available, and that's going to cause S4 uh -oh. problems. He gets gushed as well. Ohio saying, we can get this kill. And that Fissure blocks off the ramp. S4's trapped. Ray's leveled up by Ketchigimba as well, and S4's going to go to the knife. Should not be able to get it. Oh, oh Roche doesn't hit S4. It's hitting the tide. <laughs> S4's like, why? Oh, the clap! Gets him with the clap! And Ohio's like, I'm Okay, so, oh. double kill for Roshan. <laughs> now we're talking. S4 is like, Roshan, why are you betraying me? What are oh you doing? Oh my god. So first they, mi they miss a raise. Then he, he brings him down to critical HP while under the Roshan. Rosh cooperates at first, starts hitting the tide, but then he bashes the tide. Then the Earthshaker runs in, which triggers the clap, which gets the deny. Oh and then just for good measure, was... Tide's like, I might as well deny it to Rosh. That was the Claudia series of fail for Tina That fails of the week worthy for oh sure. Oh my, I, I hope Suns fan is watching. Oh boy, that was, that was something special. <laughs> the, I mean, the biggest mistake there was the Shadow Feet. You should have waited to KS with the raise. Not even KS, just like yeah. secure the kill so he doesn't deny the raise. Let, let him run into the pit, get low enough for the raise will last hit him, and then you throw it out. Yeah. But just got a, a little excited, maybe didn't do the math quite well enough in the, the heat of the moment, and cost him in the end the first blood. Oh, we're seeing good zoning from Puppy, going for that level one Maledict you occasionally see from Witch Doctors when they're trying to zone out some of these tankier offlaners like Tide, like your Bristlebacks, and something very effective in general. All right, guys. So now the lanes are going to settle down a little bit. We will see the rocket, or uh, not the rocket barrage, the homing missile being leveled up here early on, which is a pretty irritating build to lane against. Every time you see that missile get dropped, you basically just walk back to your tower. With the Earth Shaker here, maybe you can get away with posting up a little more, but yeah. it just it's not even the damage or the kill potential of the spell itself. It's the fact that every time it's cast on you, you just want to walk away. Yeah, and that's the big thing is here, there's just constant mana sustain for Arteezy. He can throw the homing missile out for days, whereas the fissures are very limited. Mushi only has the one clarity on himself, so at some point you run out of fissures, Arteezy should not run out of mana. Well, we see the poll results now, thanks to those of you who participated on RedBullBattlegrounds.com. And sure to people, challenge IG. The people Ooh. have spoken. They wanted the, the vanilla, the safe choice. Just attack. make sure that IG or Secret at least lose one game moving into the fourth match of the I'm game. with the voters, man. I'm, not, I'm partly biased because I wanted that Secret versus IG matchup, but I think it maybe was the strategic move to make as well. So this obviously really hurts Malaysia. Not only missing on the first blood, but now that Tidehunter in the offlane has leveled up Gush, and that makes him a whole lot easier to kill as we see this endless homie missile harass. Boink again. Just forcing on the Shadow Fiend off the lane. He's only got seven CS gods, and uh, even if he's got some stacks in the jungle, that's something that the Gyro Wisp could look to contest and even steal once they get level six on the Gyrocopter. Oh yeah, you're gonna be a bit careful here, and we'll see Wisp maybe hit level three soon. They can get really aggressive and start considering diving if they ever think Earthshaker is not nearby. You've got a DD rune up on Kuro, but mostly just using that to get to the bottle charges to heal up himself and Arteezy and sustain their mana pulse. Well, you mentioned for Secret that they didn't have the best initiation unless they get the Brew Blink. But the way the game's developing, he's going to have a fast blink. He's now, hardly contested at all bottom lane. I just made an interesting move here. He's really trying to bait out Ketchigimba oh, in the see. mid lane, because this is not a hero you'd expect in the mid lane. If you're Secret and going for dive, you're not expecting to get gushed. Oh, top lane in the meanwhile, Zai posting up. If he gets cold feeded, he might be the real first blood of the game. One more auto attack. Malaysia will draw it. They had to do it the good old fashioned way after 
a clowny little rush to skirmish, but still for Secret, getting a lot out of their safe lane. It is entirely uncontested, so not all bad by any means. Yeah. Yeah. As for it's a completely empty lane. Now, TZ at mid is outlasting the Shadow Fiend as well, as you'd kind of expect with the laning setup, but it's worth noting that Shadow Fiend, yeah, he's doing very poorly as far as his farm goes. Looks like the Earthshaker is stacking the jungle pit again. The homing missile is coming in, and we'll take another doink on the head. That's the thing. Malaysia have stacks in the jungle. The Ancients, they are in Stack City right now, which is where the catch-up will come for Shadow Fiend, whereas Wisp has not really spent as much time stacking up his own jungle. I, I think if you're Secret, though, you've played enough Shadow Fiend in your day, you know the stacks are being, are being made, and wouldn't be surprising at all if they used the Clockwork to scout them, maybe get the early Wisp relocate and, and look to contest them, and with the fast brew blink that they'll most likely have, it's... They have the tools to get in nice and close. As we will see in the mid lane, a bit of a dive onto Kachikimba. Fissure is available. Connects on Kuroki, one raise, and one more auto attack. He gets the kill. A little nice saw erupting from the Malaysia corner here. They uh, are getting into it. Yeah, they have been. At this point, you've got to pump yourselves up after that loss to Hell Raises. This is an important match. They beat Secret before. If anything, they want to get in Secret's head. They want to say, look, we beat you guys before. You guys are in trouble now that you're versing us. And it, in, in the past, it has been an interesting divergence between most of the Eastern teams and the Western teams. Like looking at uh, the International for International 2, great example, where Fluff and Stuff and Complexity really felt uncomfortable not having headsets on to be able to communicate over the microphone. And instead, the players at first were just kind of yelling at each other loudly in the booth, whereas for a lot of the Asian teams, especially the Chinese teams, they're, they're very used to be playing in land cafes, to be in a more open environment and just yelling their heads off, basically. So this, yeah. this is kind of more of the old school. Uh, ladder way. Some of those players would even here. play without Dota 2 sounds. Like, I remember, I think it was at TI2 where some of those teams didn't even have earbuds. They were just communicating inside the booth without earbuds and even hear Dota 2 sounds, which do give a lot away about the game. You can hear certain spells, you do get information, but they'd have like one or two players like they're mid laning with earbuds and the rest of the team just purely emphasizing the communication. And, well, for now, that's a very kind of, uh, yeah, Malaysia oriented way of playing things here as well. They're getting into it and uh, really kind of moving around well in the early game with a three to one kill advantage. Well, they might be getting into it as far as the audio goes, but Secret are really getting into it here with the Brewmaster as far as the last hitting goes. Already S4 CSing so incredibly well, entirely uncontested and I mean, Arcade Boots, Vassy, and he's got 800 gold towards the Blink Dagger. This is going to be a concern for Malaysia. They don't have a great way to stop the split. They have good bursts, not exceptional. They don't have any silences like a Global or a Skyrath to instantly lock them down. And Kitchy they may struggle to deal with this. Up, but this is not what he's hoping to find. It's a double. He was hoping for much, much more oh God, out of this smoke. It's the same stuff we were seeing at yeah, Starlander. The, but the stack snipes. This again. is not that big. I mean, it was a double stack. If that's a triple or a quad stack, it's a lot more. I, I think they really expected a bigger one, yes. given that it's a wisp mid. Normally, you'll see a triple or a quad. Absolutely. Pack. That was not that crucial from Malaysia. It could have been really big. He's going to scatter the other camps and doesn't find all too much. Okay, no, Mushi said, here's where the money's at. Here's a triple. I found the mother load. Come and get it, Kachikin. <laughs> yeah. But meanwhile, Radiant Squad has scouted up the, the dire jungle a bit with Whoa, some wisp This is good for Malaysia if the higher can bait him into the Shadow Fiend raises. They're going to throw in the gush, and now they're bringing in backup. S4, he is a beautiful bounty to be claimed. One raise, two raise, they get Puppy, and they may find the brew, but he's got a split. He'll clap, he'll split quickly, and now the Dire Hole comes in. Boulder onto KYX, but they bring him down. They're looking for more. With the relocate uh, not ready yet, they can just run down Kachikin, but thought he might have gotten close to six there, but doesn't quite have it yet. Doesn't need it either. Good rotations from Secret, and that's one of those big problems with Queen of Pain. Went for two points in Shadow Dragon. Well, I guess if he had three in screen, but only has level one blink, so didn't have a good way out of there. And that blink forward, they didn't even need the Queen of Pain for the one kill they got. If anything, the Queen of Pain rotation was a poor decision from Malaysia. They weren't ever going to kill Brewmaster because the split was available, and that's where KYXY is going to be regretting that rotation down bottom. Well, and of all the lanes to gank, it's the one that's most well equipped to rebuff the assault with the Brew already in level six. Is this a scary time now? As Secret will pressure up this lane. S4 up to 1,500 gold. Johnny does hit level 6 at top, so we could see that Ice Blast get thrown down towards bottom lane. He's going to throw it soon, though. And they need some sort of setup. The, the Fissure are probably the main way to deal with this, but right now the Earthshaker not even remotely in the neighborhood. Here comes the dive. They force out the Queen of Pain Blink, and that will secure the tower. This homing missile, just such a good zoning spell. Yeah, he's gone. I don't know if he's going to keep leveling up. I think at this point, the two points is enough. One, you're kind of laning stage, and 
the plan from here is going to be start leveling up black on the farm efficiency. Mid lane. Right, there's the fissure, the ice blast you mentioned. <laughs> Enough to secure the kill. Yeah. Very smooth move by Kachik Embo, who suddenly is nearly even with that Brewmaster in terms of net worth. Oh, he's, he's played really well, considering it's such a tough lane. Just played it patiently, really showing his prowess in this mid lane. Understanding the matchup well, not getting too aggressive, giving away any kills. And I, I feel like it helps having your defensive support in mid lane be someone who's probably played this Shadow Fiend versus with dual lane matchup as well. Mushi knows what kind of support to offer Ketchik, knows that he can support him to some extent, but also needs to make sure he has stacks, because if he sat mid lane without stacking, Ketchik is not ever catching up. He had to stack, but at the same time, he also had to keep him alive. Well, now that the Ice Blast is ready, and we're just going to see an endless barrage of these things as uh, one will head towards the bottom lane. We're S4 farming up. Will he walk back into it? He will step right back in. Queen of Pain may engage now. KYXY a little worried about the Drunken Haze. Yeah. Doesn't want to force the issue. He had maybe four points in scream there. He could go for it, but... A lot of pressure by this AA, though. Even when they're not getting a kill, it's just forcing Seeker to play more defensively and keeping them a bit on the back foot. They're going to TP out the Brew, though, and he does have his Blink Dagger goal now if he wants to buy it. Yeah. Fix it up. And right as his clap comes back up, I think he's probably asking for a smoke. Yeah, he gets bought a smoke from Kuro, so going to make his next move and probably look to smoke up maybe and, with a support. And they have to relocate almost, just yeah. uh, a wave or two more and they'll have it. They can kill pretty much anyone on the map, outside of maybe Queen of Pain who can get that fast blink escape. Now, there's no Ravage either. There's no great counter-initiation, at least not yet for Team Malaysia. They gotta be very cautious now. This is only, If this doesn't lead to a kill, it's a big win for Malaysia. Puppy, though, gonna... Get, a, get killed by reveals, KYXY. Oh, he reveals the blink as well. Ooh. S4 jumping into oh, KYXY's cone of vision. That's, That's a, a huge a win. big loss for yeah. Team Secret. Did they use the smoke as well? Or no, no, he just used it now. So he's right after the kill. And he's looking for a kitchen in mid lane. I think that's the biggest kill in the map to be getting. All right, trying to make their move in, but look who's in position to cancel this. It's going to be Johnny. He may end up falling. Okay. Blink, uh, oh. if there's no split immediately, he'll make it out. And Wow. Malaysia are playing so oh, smart right lane. Now. There's a hook in onto the Tidehunter. Bit of an engagement coming here as Ohio doesn't have to ravage just yet. Good move by Zai. Finds himself a solo kill and may set up here for a push on mid. Yeah, that's a nice play because Seeker was struggling so much to find kills off of S4. So Blink Dagger, two missed Blink kills in a row. Not even missed, but two Blinks in a row that didn't amount to much. S4 mid, forced to Bruce split defensively. May help them take the tower. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. It'll help them take the tower, but again, you'd love to find kills off of this. Well, uh, let's see if they get punished on the way out. Good cycle in there, keeping the Shadow Fiend back. They look to kill Brewmaster. coming through, and oh, it almost hits the Brew as the split ends instead. KYXY and Mushi get caught in the cask. Heavy damage. He goes with the Echo and Chase. Oh, oh no, miss! Oh, oh S4. Johnny's He's chasing! Just walking away. It'll be Johnny next. Kachik Imba may be there after, dropping the Requiem. One more auto attack. Who's going to win the fight? <laughs> Nobody, apparently. The pings come out. Oh, Zai wins the fight. Yes, like, it is. Doesn't even have to participate in the fight and he wins it for his team. Ay, ay, ay. Wow. What a mess. He almost timed the blink scream so that it hit as the brew split ended and he reformed, but it was just like a quarter of a second off. Oh, man. Then that... he, ends up, he ends up dying. The Earthshaker comes yeah. in to help, gets caught by a bouncy cask, and the whole fight just falls apart. And gods, we're 12 minutes in, still no Ravage. It's crippling Team Malaysia. They just get it now. Malaysia just went too all in on trying to time that fissure to catch the Brumas as he came out of the split. It missed, the screen missed, and everything fell apart from there, unfortunately. But now they do have Ravage. They've got tied up to level six. But this is all being scattered. Some good radiant vision in deep in the dire jungle. And this, oh boy, they scattered out. Well, let's see that if Team Malaysia costly. knows they're going to send the clockwork into position. Zai will bring the smoke. Malaysia dropping a ward. They get a gush off onto Zai. Now lucky to retreat. Surely touch comes and out. And with the ice blast, they almost get him. He tries to hook his way to safety. That was he saw the going smoke. I guess he, he was really like expecting them to head towards mid, I think. I don't know. Zai did not need to be there. I'll relocate bottom after the Queen of Pain blink, KYXY. Oh, it's only Curl though. He doesn't have any backup. There's five seconds, turns with the ult. Not enough with the overcharge coming through KYXY. Man, I'm going down, they just need a crit. No, the clap will do it anyway. They get the kill, they're gonna burn that four back, and they're immediately rumbling top lane. Not sure about that turn though. They didn't have the Bruce split, and they just waddle into a gigantic rabbit. Easy knockdown there for Ohio. A couple uncharacteristic mistakes there. Kuro bringing back the Brew into death, and 
Not sure what happened, whether it was Guru's fault or the tethered target's fault. They'd have easy rambling in top lane. He's gonna go down quickly. Nice raises from Kenjik. Unfortunately, Johnny's gonna pay the price as Zai TP's in, traps him in a cogs. Oh, great death ward by Puppy. Yeah. Walks back. The Earthshaker trying to hunt him down in the tree line, but no way to stop the death ward at that point. Finally gets off the fissure on one hero, but the damage was done and both teams just back and forth over extensions and resulted it's a very action-packed Dota here, gods, early on. Oh yeah. Someone left their ball behind. <laughs> They're right. gonna find Zai though. Well, it's worth leaving Zai behind. behind as well. He's gonna hook to safety. Okay. Oh, the heels really coming into play here. Both teams, 5v5 Dota. This, yes. this is a crazy amount of aggression. Now they go in. They've got the Bruce split ready. S4, well done. blink, clap, initiation, Kachik in, but no mech yet. He's really struggled to complete this. I think it's even coming on the courier now, but into the trees he goes. The courier man to fall in as well. Boulder toss, not oh. enough to finish him. They pop him in the end with the whiz. As the Earthshaker looks to be next. Looks like the rocket gonna dink him while he's in the air, but that's okay. Rocket barrage, couple of auto attacks, and Mushi also will bite the dust. Every time there's a big ult up, a Ravage or a Bruce split, it's just right back the other way. Somebody's gonna turn the game around. By far the most aggressive game we've seen yet. Finally a moment for a Hydra Breeze. He's managing to take some stacks, and this will suddenly be a Blink Dagger. He took ages to get level 6, didn't what have any that? farm. Did he, did he clear know. any Ancients? Uh, I'm not actually... I don't know it now, but... I think it was that two kills at top where he was really far behind and then the Wisp and Brew came in. He helped set up those two kills. Probably got one of... Yeah, he's sitting on three kills at the moment. So I think got at least the last of one, maybe both. And that just gave him a big... And when you're behind like he was, that gives you a lot. Yeah. As there is a hookshot oh, attempted really off the mark. Too. It's only Kuro, but the That's solo enough. kill with the urn charge. Oh, it's oh, not. almost. 2 hey, HP. Still the orbs bouncing. He's going to head back soon. And will oh, a rocket oh, find oh. him on the way out? I think it's still cooling down. He predicts he'll walk back, but actually no. TP'd home. That was a nice relocate. Even though he had no one with him, that I think he didn't. I think that time around it was just like I can kill, get this kill my own. Unfortunately, didn't quite have enough damage against the magic one charges of KYXY. Jesus, man, this game is this is intense. <laughs> and for Malaysia, it means everything. A loss here, they're down to one life, and I mean maybe they string together a massive series of wins to come back. But at that point, everybody's going to be gunning for them just to just to yeah, knock another team out of the event. This class comes in, they S4, no split available, but KYXY just can't deal with how tanky S4 is. Easy Drunken Haze, TP out, and finally, gods, they have the mech. It feels like this is long overdue. It's really been hurting Malaysia not having it. And you know, S4 going for the Guardian Greaves, this new item. At least it looks that way. He's got the Arcane Boots, he's got the Hedris up, and... Hmm. Looks like that's what he has in mind for himself. Let's see he just wants, like, a straight pipe here, even. I, I think they already have a mech on the Clockwork. Clockwork, yeah, it has the mech as Maybe well. Maybe Clock will go for the Guardian Greaves. Okay. See, yeah, possibly, yeah, I'd say Clockwork X is the one building Guardian Greaves, you're right. Hmm. Maybe they go for like a mech pipe, let's five man push your high ground with mech pipe, a BKB gyrocopter. Speaking of gyrocopter, farming up some ancients now. He's in a, almost completed that BKB of his. Yeah, I think the item that S4 could really go for here is a Vlad. So would go pretty well with the with the, the gyro. You are up against the AA, though. Yeah. It's such a good ancient apparition game. You're countering the Witch Doctor heal, the Wisp, potentially even lifesteal from the Brew. I, I think you're right. It's a lot of be, tools to deal with. It's going to be the Vlad's coming at me. We're standing kind of Brewmaster pickup now. All of a sudden, Gyro has a lot of lifesteal. He's got the Dominator, and is currently farming up a nice fat stack of Ancients. and. Well, we'll have a lot more regen to work with, and I, I feel like that's where this Ancient Apparition play has to be on point as the game moves forward. Okay, well, we'll see what in Malaysia's next move's gonna be. It feels like they needed to sit back, farm up, Kachi, get up get up to his BKB especially. And KYX when the Queen of Pain has had a bit of a rough game, one and three with the four assists. He's not got the kind of farm he'd hoped for considering he was the safe lane farmer for Team Malaysia. All right, looking at Malaysia now, the, the big item is, like you said, I think that, that KYXY Orchid, he really is going to need it to deal with the Brew, and uh, the good news is Brew may have a very delayed BKB the way he's itemizing. There is still the defensive relocate, but generally you're going to want to reserve that for the Gyrocop here. Having a fast Orchid when Brew blinks in before he can ulti, if he goes for a clap, you have to get the silence. Even if he doesn't go for the clap, you should still be able to silence him before he ulties if you've got fast fingers, and KYXY, his mechanics are up there with the best of them, so... Should be able to see him get that quick silence off if needed. TZ, now BKB complete, and for Malaysia, can they deal with this? Is that That's basically the question at this point. They're mm. almost entirely magic damage, but she gave that no big DPS items. All bottom.
bottom lane. Echo, Quapult, see you later, S4, says Mushi as they will jam him back into the well. Very smooth kill by, yeah. by the no, squad there. No hook shot for any kind of a counter initiation. They get the TPs out. And Mushi, 1400 gold. He's the bottom net worth hero, but all you need in this hero is that blink dagger, and suddenly you've got a big team fighting AoE hero in Earthshaker. It's so hard to go high ground. I mean, you already mentioned Secret is not the best lineup at pushing in general. And they're up against one of the just the, the dirtiest five-man defense lineups in the game. This is this is a game where even if Secret pull ahead uh, and look like they're going to take it, it may be a very long time before they can even think about cracking the Malaysia base. And right now, Malaysia looking real good here, Gods. Yeah. They're, for Secret, it's just keep on farming for the late game with TZ. The early game net worth still favoring Secret by about 2,000, but yeah, they've got no real good way to end things here, take more towers. They don't want to push into Tide, Shadow Fiend, Queen of Pain, A. I mean, in so many ways, Malaysia have the superior team fight, the better ability to defend high ground to turtle it up. Late game wise, gonna be interesting. Heroes like Brewmaster can fall off quite a lot in the late game, especially when you're not completely snowballing, which right now S4 is not. He's behind Queen of Pain and Shadow Fiend on farm, only barely ahead of the Tide Hunter, so. I feel like heroes like Tide benefit a lot more from farm than the Brewmass in this scenario. If you can get up to like that Arcane Boots, four staff refresher type status. Wow, speaking of that, Brew is going to find KOX by the screen. We'll cancel a blink. Then Silence is pumpy to prevent follow up, but there's the hook. And the clap comes through, gets the kill. Nicely done by Secret, who are immediately going to smoke off of this and make their way towards mid. Hey. See what they can find. They don't have a hookshot available, but the. Blink clap split is going to be the big thing that they look to fight around. They do have to relocate as well. Something to keep in mind. And huh, the smoke going to get revealed by the time. Oh, they are coming in. Oh, do you want to relocate on this? It could be risky, but they're bringing in the whole gang. Five heroes hunting that watermelon. And he's going to TP out right where the relocate <laughs> came from. Almost taunting them. He like them stumbled upon this. He's like, oh, they're going to be back in a few seconds. Let's, uh, yeah, let's TP. <laughs> Waves his anchor as he, he jettisons himself yeah. towards safety. He's great for Mushi, who's now close and close to blink 100 gold short. Man, it's been a while since I've heard anyone utter that expression. <laughs> space created for Mushi. <laughs> he's, been the, he's been the guy having to give space yeah. to his team for some time now. Oh, the good old days. And also Kachik, who still needs a BKB on Shadow Fiend, but getting a couple hundred gold closer to it. They've got decent damage to go through BKB, Witch Doctor, Death Ward, you've got Gyrocopter, who hasn't got much physical damage yet, but you can have a Vladzor for your team, but all in all, Shadow Fiend with a B, as long as he gets his BKB off when he's still fairly healthy, will deal a lot of damage, and it's going to take Secret's like entire effort to bring him down, and especially the Death Ward as well. It honestly seems like Puppy will be the second biggest damage dealer and most important teamfight hero after the Gyrocopter. And that's where Malaysia want to focus him. I don't know how to focus him, but they want to make sure they either cancel the Death Ward or hit him in the Ravage, get an Ice Blast on him, get hit him with the Sonic Wave. Make sure the AoE spells also catch Puppy, not just the core heroes of Team Secret. Well, that BKB is available, gods, and out it will fly on the, the shitty Wizard Courier. Moving into position, I'll pick it up now. Do Malaysia look for a fight, do you think, with this? Or do they just continue farming and angling for late game, even with the BKB? I could see them going for pickoffs or looking to like bait. Like they have Queen of Pain farming bottom lane. This is a like a bait opportunity where they're hoping kind of maybe a relocate comes in or a gank comes in and then they counter initiate with Mushi with a blink echo. I don't think they'll group up as five and go for a push. That's not where their lamp excels. Where their lamp can excel is baiting teammates and defending towers. I splashed being flung towards the bottom lane, but a uh, pretty barren bottom lane it is. It'll be a complete whiff. It's all about the, I mean, from Malaysia, it's find a pick off, go farm, or go farm and then find a pick off. So they're gonna just keep playing a slow paced game. This is not looking like a game that's gonna end anytime soon. Possibly one of our first long games of today, apart from that opening game between Summers Rift and Malaysia. Yeah, the, the pause has definitely made that yeah. one a little longer than it actually <laughs> And this was. game is action-packed. At least for the first 15 minutes of the game, we were seeing constant kills and fights from the two teams, but we're kind of entering that stage where both teams will look to farm up their kind of late-game core items, go for smoke games when possible. Can't really take Roshan or push very easily, although there is a look, juicy-looking T1 tower in the mid lane, and that's what Kitchi gives up. Zach's going to pick up. Shadow Fiend gets a free tower, because Secret just not in position to defend it. Maybe a little scared about... Some potential smoke play from Malaysia. Yeah, Zai will walk around in, in a vision of two supports. He hooks in onto Mushi. The relocate comes in and the threat of the gang. Soon to join them. Fissure can't get it off just yet. Now the clap will end one. Mushi should be next. Artor able to bring him down. It's a two for nil. Secret coming out way on top there. 
just such a nice thing to have a relocate on your side when you're a clockwork. You can just go roaming through the most crazy positions on your own. Because even if they run at you, suddenly you've got a BKB gyrocopter being relocated in it. Well, then you win a fight off of that. So Secret really seemed ready for that one. They did not end up trying to take the Shadow Fiend when there was heroes behind him. Then when they do come in, they find the supports, they blow them up instantly, and like you said, just a very good time to have an invis rune on your key initiator. The blink available for a high, they get the glyph off, but they don't have the BKB on the dragon, so it seems like this is a time when C yeah. want to play it safe. Kedjik Imba was walking in as if he was going to try and fight, but if a high would blink, I think they would have gone for the blink ravage there, but it was on cooldown for two more seconds from a previous blink usage, so... They did miss their opportunity to maybe catch Secret by surprise. Even with teammates dead, they could either buy back a TP into the tier two, or just win the fight with a, a Blink Ravage Requiem. Oh man, it's a it's a dead heat so far, to be honest, Scott. It's a yeah. slight lead now for Secret, about 3,000 gold, but both teams with their strengths in the late game. Secret a little bit more mobile, and uh, has a, a very good team fight carrying the gyro, but on the side of Malaysia, the more well-rounded late game lineup appears like multiple sources of Reliable initiation. They're gonna find Kuro here in the river. Out comes the Echo. He's able to just tether his way to freedom. This has been that's a game way. of just hook <laughs> shots away. Is yeah. We may have a little bit of a lag spike here. Looks like everything's settled down though. Yeah. Cheek Imba taking a homie missile, but we've seen the tether away, the hook away. This is just a get to the chopper kind of game. I really like the Malaysia late game just because it feels like it's very good. How they got. Decent physical damage against Ken. Chick Impa caught out. Gunson gets a BKB off until now. He doesn't. Okay, he's not with the shot on Mana. Can go on. For the Requiem. He does have the stick. Not using it. Feels like a good time as Arteezy will just BKB his way through that Requiem. Takes basically no damage now being pursued by Homie Missile. And where's the backup? Ohio with the big four step away, but the missile's going to follow him. Saves Kachik. Is slated to fall. He is no way out at this point. Another rocket. They also find the tide. They get forced out the Ravage. The buyback's available on Shadow Fiend, but with no Requiem, what can he really do? Ohio blinking out, dodging the clap. They leap forward onto him as KYXY turns attention to Kuroki. Will Ohio Ravage or will he just accept his fate? Four step to the high ground, but the rocket's there to greet him. Zai again and again keeps on finishing off kills. The last man standing is KYXY. Oh, who boy. scurries back to freedom. Yeah, that's where was the backup for Shadow Fiend and classic S4 Brewmaster keeping the tide locked down. He was cycloned up in the air twice during that fight at the most inopportune moments from the laser. Really good execution. You find the Shadow Fiend, the heroes who can back him up and help him turn the fight around weren't available. Whoa! Huge Ice Blast! Queen of Pain Sonic Wave, but Queen of Pain dies in it. And oh. no one on Secret Side goes down. The mech, the Voodoo Restoration, they're going to heal back up. Imagine if they oh. had the Ravage right there. How big would that be? A Ravage, a Requiem, anything. But now, looks like the Roche may end up going down here. Mushi blinks forward and tries to grab it. It'll cost him his life as well. And Yikes. all of a sudden, what was basically a dead heat for the first 20 minutes. Oh, and Johnny now pulled out of the bottom. Is turning into a very one-sided route. Johnny under the call down, chucks out nice blast. He'll die as well. Malaysia self-destructing at yeah. the 25-minute mark. Absolutely. This game was very even. Malaysia had plenty of good late-game options, but they make a few bad fights in a row. And it's something which is going to happen. Wisp relocates, have a way of finding those pickoffs and punishing mistakes harder than any other hero in the game. And that's where, against a Clockwork Wisp lineup, it's so unforgiving. You make a small mistake and suddenly it turns into a huge lost team fight because you lose that one or two heroes at the start and then suddenly the Wisp relocates is finding three or four more and suddenly you're team wide. So, Malaysia going to find their high ground under siege now by an Aegis Gyrocopter who's got a Sanjin Yasha and a Demon Edge on top of that. Suddenly, Arteezy well ahead of the pack on farm. Yeah, at this rate, MKB is not far off, and this is long before anyone in Malaysia gets their first real big damage or luxury item. We're nowhere near the Shadow Feet Butterfly. The refresher for Tide seems like a distant dream at this point. And for Malaysia, they're desperate for some kind of momentum. They have the Rabbit, also the Shaker available, but immediately KYXY caught and Mushi's burst down. It. And Mushi's been in initiated on by a Wisp of all heroes, just walks into him in the tree line and plinks him down with the pea shooter while the Witch Doctor does a little bit of extra work from the sides. That was just great anticipation by Kuro. And well, I wonder why this Tidehunter is trying to defend this tower so hard with this team. Probably there's a Shaker in the trees. Great game sense, and it looks like it may even be a later. For they have too many things to scout out heroes in the trees. You've got Earthshaker and Tide both trying to use the trees to their advantage, but you've got Wisp Spirits, you've got Rocket Flare, and as a result, these heroes you think they're safe in trees aren't doing, aren't actually safe at all. Well, Hyo's going to look to do something kind of sneaky here, but he needs teammates alive for damage. He can't go in by himself. 
on the lich, or should they go on to lose this, which, which certainly feels like the way the game is headed. They are on one life the rest of the way, gods, and oh boy. I guess they have the, they still have the reflector, so they can dodge one challenge, but you know more are going to be coming. And who knows if that challenge is even at them. If, if Summer's Rift is up next and challenges whoever, they could make a deal. They say, look, we're going to challenge you, use your reflector, and give us Malaysia, and we'll look to knock them out. Well, free, quick heel trip from Kuro, and all of a sudden, Secret back at full strength. They are just beefing up in a big way at this point, getting very tanky and difficult to stop. But Gyro seems almost unkillable with the brew and the, the clockwork just always supporting him and setting up a good perimeter so that nobody can really get close. And he's never the first man into the fight. It's always the clockwork initiating, and then the Gyro comes in. And there's just no way for Malaysia to stop that BKB at that point. Well, we expected a pipe, or we're actually going to see it from somebody else. Huh. It's going to be, in the end, a, a wisp pipe. Yeah, I mean, things will slow down now, it looks like. And Secret, I guess, still of ages may go for another five-man push, but they've got some big items picked up. I mean, taking a look at some of them, MKB on Gyrocopter. Clockwork now has a Lotus Orb, so you can throw that Echo Shell onto the Gyrocopter front line. He's just going to be on the at this point. Now the hook, this time it gets blocked by S4. Not on the same page as Zion. Looks like the rocket won't connect. BKB forced out on Gyro, and they're still chasing in the death ward, trying to finish off the Shadow Fiend. Won't do it. Doesn't even kill Johnny. Uh, unfortunate there for Secret. Not able to finish the kill, and Zai's probably just a little, little bit frustrated that he couldn't get that hook off. Yeah. Well, for Secret, they are ready to go high ground with Aegis in hand, and S4 can initiate it on anything he wants now that he doesn't have to worry about the Orchid because of this BKB completion. This is really handy for him to have. Secret moving up towards the high ground. The pipe gets activated, and in they go. And this tower seems all but certain to go down. Secret will take it, and if they take this lane of racks, they are just one lane away from Mega Creeps, closing in on a win here and remaining undefeated, should they manage to do so. They haven't been challenged a whole lot, but hey, three lives is three lives. Now Mushi, top lane, gets trapped. He tried to leave the base, he'll be punished for it. Brought down, now the Bruce split onto Johnny, a hook forward from Zai. One small leap for the clock. A giant jump for Team Secret. Two heroes down, might be three. KYX by stunned and dead. And Malaysia with no buyback may just tap out now. Secret seem unstoppable in this game. Yeah, just really good at taking advantage of even the smallest Malaysia mistakes. They just found their opening windows, took capitalized upon them, and then Malaysia just crumbling bit by bit. They were kind of neck and neck for most of the game. That 3,000 gold lead was really nothing when you're 23 minutes in. But suddenly, in the course of seven minutes, we're looking at a 20k plus gold advantage going Secret's way. Four racks down, and Secret looking to go for that crushing blow in the top lane. Put the nail in the coffin. They may not have an Aegis any longer in Arteezy, but there's more scary items flying out. I mean, out. They, do they really need it? They've Ooh, got the defensive right. relocate, the, the Witch Doctor heal, you have the, the Echo Lotus Shell Orb, you mentioned, yeah. the pipe. Yeah, it's a lot of ways to deal with any sort of Malaysia on, onslaught. I, I don't see Arteezy very likely dying in the front lines. If Secret want to play things cautiously and safe, they can back off and looks like they may just farm for a bit longer. They've got the entire dire jungle to take advantage of and most of the map to take advantage of is Malaysia really just bottled up now. And Malaysia is hard to go high ground against when all five are alive with their ultis, but if you're secret, you maybe just wait for that next stages, and then you just let Zai lead the way with the hook shot. Once he gets the hook, Malaysia at best are running away. They're certainly not initiating on you. Well, Team Secret, their first game of Red Bull Battlegrounds and their first game of 6.84, and things looking pretty good for them. It's been a solid showing for this team. Not quite the dominant fashion they exhibited at, at DAC, which seems like it was their best tournament so far as a team, but still solid. And looking like they're going to take their first win here if they can keep it up. Yeah. So we'll see them. Not sure if they're waiting for any kind of key item here or if they're just trying to wait things out. Okay, there we go. Arteezy picks up a Glimmer Cape of his own. Normally an item you'd expect on a support, but I mean, this is I a... mean, they're all magic damage, right? Yeah. You just pop Absolutely. this thing and... Malaysia can't even scratch you. It's attack speed, it's spell resistance. Like. Glimmer Cape and BKB with a pipe back, eat him up, heals and relocate. I, he's basically invincible, I feel like. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like it's actually, that's the crazy thing about this item. When you can get this as a 
like six item. It, it's, I think it's just like, okay, we've won the game, or at least we've take four racks. What's an item I can buy now to just go for this game winning push? And he's like, yeah, Gloomer Kid, this, this item is damn good right now. Yeah, well, who knows? Maybe we'll start seeing it on more cores, and at that point, perhaps it, it sees on, another nerf for two. On paper, you don't need to buy on your cores because your teammates can cast it on you, but hey, I guess the, the more the merrier with this team, or actually it's. I the... mean, there's just so many nice buffs that you can throw on frontline carries right now. Between yeah. that, you get the. The medallion buff, uh, along with the the potential evasion that comes out when you upgrade it, and you just can't kill that frontliner. It feels like. I feel like that's where we may just see a lot more of a Dragon Knight type heroes in this patch moving forward. But now S4 Blake's in on to Mushu with the pipe active, not yet using the split, just clubbing him back to the well. They force out the Kitchi, give him a BKB. We'll secure the tower. Now the Bruce split for a bit of zoning. Uh, Clockwork Hook still available. They're going to cycle it up the tide, and with the tide up in the air for some time, that'll be the tower. Probably the third lane of Rax Malaysia pretty much have to go now and just throw bodies at the Secret Squad, but they can't because the Death Ward Boulder tosses forced Ohio back. They're getting nothing during this time. Kachi Kimba unable to Requiem because the BKB's down. He finally gets it off, but Secret, they've already got the Mega Creeps. They're diving them to the well. Another hook from Zai. He just keeps on laying them in, and Arteezy will start the Fountain Farm. Secret, looking good here in their opening <laughs> Battlegrounds match. Jukes Mushi there. Actually, no, he dies to the fountain anyways. It's GG. Woo. Okay, that's that's Team Secret. That was a decent showing from them and a good start to their Red Bull Battlegrounds Dota 2 campaign. They played well, but it also felt like Malaysia just that one...